San Antonio Soccer Examiner Chris Oppen here with the wrap-up of Week 23 of the MLS season. I was supposed to be doing a report from Robertson Stadium, but thanks to American Airlines delaying a flight at DFW, uh, the friend of mine who had the tickets didn't make it at time, so I wasn't able to make it to the game. So thanks, American Airlines. Uh, also, congratulations to SC Dallas, who this week broke the duck in Mexico, becoming the first MLS team to win a Champions League match in Mexico. So well done, FC Dallas. Things got started in the MLS in New England as the Revs welcomed the Houston Dynamo. New England taking an early lead as former Dynamo man Ryan Cochran opened the scoring after four minutes. After a short corner created chaos, a poor clearance fell to Coraglio. His shot was deflected and fell to Cochran who was able to score easily. Dynamo were determined to respond and were denied by good goalkeeping from Matt Rice. It took until the closing stages for the Dynamo to get their goal. And it was Davis who was the provider killing his corner to Carlos Costley who forced a save from Rice, spilling to Boswell with a simple tap in to salvage point for the Dynamo. Sporting Kansas City dominated another home match as they hosted the Portland Timbers. Sporting took control from the get-go and took the lead in the 25th minute as Stoshev sent the ball in box for Rice, heading back the ball was cleared by Paul Wander, but only as far as Zuzi, whose 25-yard strike put the hosts in front before one of the more bizarre entries in MLS history is sporting fans celebrated someone threw an Omar Bravo bobblehead hitting Jimmy Nielsen who required stitches. So let's listen to the story fans, don't throw stuff. After the, the stoppage, Sporting Kansas City kept up the pressure and they had their second after Saifong flicked on Beastle's throw for Brunbury which was saved by Perkins and they'd be tapped in by Zuzi. It was another odd moment in the 72nd minute of Sporting had their third goal as Sinovich's long ball tried to find Saad. But it was too long and was cleared, only to be cleared straight into Saad with the deflection turning into a chip right over the keeper. With nine minutes remaining, the Timbers pulled one back as Wallace sent a ball across the penalty area. Kansas City failed to deal with it and Dyke scored well. In the end, a simple 3-1 win for Sporting Kansas City. <laughs> Two long-time Eastern Conference rivals met on Thursday as the Fire hosted DC United. Duro was at his dangerous best and nearly put the Fire in front in the 14th minute, catching DC flat-footed. He broke the offside trap but hit the post with his good curling effort. A strike woke DC up as they started to control the match, but it was Duro who missed the next chance as well as Nyako sent it across for Duro, just two feet from goal, but he somehow sent his effort wide. That stunning miss sent the sides into the break on level terms. Hamid hurting himself late in the half and collapsed, and he collapsed in the tunnel on the way to the change room, and that forced Cronin to come into the DC United net for the second half. He perhaps should have done better on Chicago's goal. As was Nayaka's cross wasn't well dealt with by Woolard, who flicked it to Grazzini, he sent the volley in off of Cronin's hands. DC United came straight back, though, as Dwayne De Rosario sent a long corner for Quintana at the top of the box, who then found an open wolf and was able to send a powerful shot into the roof of the net. Both sides pushed hard to find an equal, to find a winner, I should say, but neither could find it. A hard fought 1 1 draw for Chicago. And DC, the slide still continues for the Red Bulls as they again failed to win, falling to a 2 2 loss on the road to the New England Revolution. In the 15th minute, Caraglio scored his first MLS goal with a rampaging run through the New York defence, scoring after his initial effort was saved. Caraglio had his second 37th minute just after Marquez failed to score with the header. New York conceded from a set piece for the 13th time this season. That's really a sign of poor coaching from Bucky, who must surely, surely now be really feeling the pressure. As Mateo's delivery went to the far post, allowing a simple header from Caraglio to double the lead. Contrasi struck at the stroke of half time as the referee awarded a penalty only to reverse his decision after consulting his assistant, booking Dex McCarthy for a dive. Eight minutes after half time, the Rebels had their goal. After an eight ball by Ream broke the offside trap, Richards breaking through and scoring with a solid strike. Mansali put the Rebels' position under threat in the 55th minute. When his elbow earned him a second yellow card, the Red Bulls pushed to take advantage of the extra man before Taino's rash challenge earned him a second yellow of his own, leaving both teams to finish out the match with 10. With three minutes to play, it was Richards who earned New York a point after Lindbergh earned space on the left, sending in a low cross for Richards to poke home at the near post. 2-2 the final score. 
was a key battle in the East when Philadelphia made the trip to Crew Stadium. It was the crew who emerged victorious and cemented themselves on top of the conference, albeit against a Philadelphia side fresh off a plane. You see, there, the match ended up being delayed for 30 minutes due to Philadelphia's flight on Friday being cancelled due to storm. The Union didn't arrive in Ohio until midday, so good to see the airlines didn't only mess me up in the MLS this week. Renteria opened the scoring in the 37th minute, sitting home. Rogers' clever cross. Pijunovic had the equaliser just five minutes later after Daniel's corner. Pijunovic ran onto the ball well and delivered a perfect header. In the end, it was a penalty that brought the crew the win. After Williams tried to block Rogers' cross, the referee called the penalty. Yet again, Mendoza refused to allow a teammates asking to take the penalty the opportunity and only just snuck the ball past Mondragon who got a touch but saw the ball spin over the line. The Columbus crew winning 2-1. So Robertson Stadium, where I was supposed to be on Saturday night, saw an exciting clash as Houston um, proved that they were masters of the late goal yet again. They ran out 3-2 winners. Real Salt Lake started the match well and they opened the score in the 28th minute as Espindola was the quickest to a deflected to a deflection, sending it past, sending the ball past Tally Hall, a lead that stood until half time. Houston Dynamo came out determined after the break, and it was Ching who scored just after the break after costly sent the ball to Davis, got through the defence and sent the ball to Brian Ching, tucking the ball past Ramondo. Luis Gill put Real in front on the hour as he got between Freeman and Boswell to head home. Espindola was crossed, and the Dynamo kept pushing him in the 70th minute. They were back on level tom terms as Davis's corner was met by Bobby Boswell, whose curling header went over the keeper and into the back of the net. It took until the 93rd minute, but homegrown player Alex Dixon scored his first ever MLS goal. After the initial effort was deflected, Dixon found space in the box, sending his left-footed strike into the back of the net, delighting the fans and earning Houston a 3-2 win. It was a battle for second in the West as the Sounders made the trip to Dallas where they had never won before. That was until Saturday. It was Hemlu's mistake that put the Sounders in front. His poor touch allowed Nagel to launch the counter, ending with Rosales shooting low from the edge of the area for the 1 0 lead. Seattle nearly made it two just minutes later as Hurtado fired past Hartman but was denied by the offside flag. Dallas had to push hard, trying to find an equaliser. And things got tougher when Lloyd was stretched from the field, forcing Dallas to play men out of position. Dallas continued to attack even after Dynamo reject Daniel Cruz and his second yellow for diving in the 56th minute. Despite Dallas's best efforts, Casey Keller was up to the test as Seattle held on for a 1 0 win, putting them second in the West. It was a hard four match in Colorado as the Rapids hosted Chivas USA and the teams fought out a tough. 2-2 draw, Colorado started the brighter side, piling on the pressure. And they got their opener in the 13th minute through full line after a good cross from Mastroni allowed full line a simple headed finish. New signing Ungel, who moved from LA so that they could accommodate Keane, set up the broker for Shivas USA's equaliser, stunning the Colorado crowd as the signs went to the break level. Colorado continued to press in the second half, taking the lead in the 69th minute from Nasi's corner, headed home well by the Rentabeks, who had earlier missed headed chances. Colorado looked set to be cruising to their fourth straight win, but it was Courtois's 86th minute goal that stole the draw for Shivas USA. Cascadia Cup got underway in the MLS as the Timbers and the Whitecaps took their rivalry to the MLS for the first time. It was an exciting start with the Timbers registering their fastest ever goal as Chara scored his first MLS goal after Cooper began to play with the turnover. Eventually finding Chara who sent a brilliant shot past Ken in just 30 seconds. Just 30 seconds, 2 minutes into the match. That goal would set the tone for the match as both sides went on to the attack. Portland made it 2 just after the half hour as Dunso headed down Dewsbury's free kick for Palazzo to chip past Cannon. It was all Portland for most of the match, but the Whitecaps did make it a nervous finish as Camilo was left wide open in the box, allowing him to score with two minutes remaining. It was too little too late, however, as the Timbers secured all three points. Another rivalry took place on Saturday as the Galaxy hosted San Jose in Robbie Keane's debut, and it didn't take long for the Irishman to score his first MLS goal. Beckham sending a ball over the San Jose defence, which Keane easily walked onto and rounded the keeper, scoring his first MLS goal, perhaps one of the simplest of his career. San Jose weren't much in this one, and it was all pretty much over in the 81st minute when Baitashaw was shown a red card for his kick on Donovan. The Galaxy put the icing on the cake in the final minute as McGee slogged home Franklin's cross. 
Galaxy confirming their first place position in the league. But of course, 1-0 up, they still wanted to sit behind the ball despite how well they controlled this one. Chicago Fire finally broke their 10 match win the streak as they beat Toronto FC 2-0. Who else but a Duro would give the Fire the lead. He opened the scoring in the 16th minute as he flicked Segarez's cross on. That got over the Fire the momentum as they continue to press. Looking for a second, Corey Gibbs perhaps should have had it in the 30th as his volley while in space soared over the bar. Toronto started to push for the rest of the half before Chicago had some neat chances right before the break. But they went in only 1-0 in front. The Fire finally got their second in the 69th minute as Gagan traded from Toronto three weeks ago. Put away a corner that Toronto allowed to bounce in the box. The win sees the team's trade places Toronto now, moving to the basement of the Eastern Conference. Kansas City scored yet another home win as they defeated DC United 1-0. Sporting opened the match brightly, threatening DC just 30 seconds into the match. The goal finally came though in the 16th minute. This Kamara recovered a clearance and unleashed a shot that left Willis in the DC goal with no chance. Sporting controlled the rest of the match, but seemed content with their one goal lead as the game progressed, taking off strikers for defenders. A comfortable win for Sporting Kansas City. And so that's it. Week 23, the playoff race is getting in full swing now, but the playoff picture is still looking no clearer. We'll be back next Tuesday with an update of week 24, and until then, remember to visit examiner.com, the internet source for the local.